Hey, pro audio enthusiasts, it is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com, coming at you again with another one of our videos. I'm going to do the take it apart. This time we have got a RCF product. Um, this is one of their new um, sub-series. Uh, this is the 905 AS Mark II, and um, this is a 15-inch uh, a um, sub in a wooden enclosure. And Let's go ahead and get right into the specs on this thing so we can get it opened up and then um, also do some testing on it. Um, the 905 AS2 is rated frequency response 40 to 120 hertz. It's got a 15 inch driver in it with a 3 inch voice coil. Um, stated max SPL is 133 dB. Um, it does have a, a stereo XLR um, input and output um, with a crossover on it and we'll get into that as well. Uh, and look at the, the settings on the little DSP in there. Um, the controls on it, uh, it does have um, gain, EQ, crossover, delay, and whether you want to set these up in um, cardioid configuration or not. So, I mean, in a small little package like this with a 15-inch sub, it's giving you the options to be able to do cardioid subs as well. Um, 2200 watts peak, so 1100 watts RMS does have power con in and out on it, so it is in their pro grade line. Um, the speaker weighs in at uh, 68 pounds, and dimensions wise is about a 24 by 24 by 18 box. Um, wooden, um, not too bad to lift. Um, I'm able to grab the handles and hoof it up myself. Um, it does have uh, a soft limiter in it, also has thermal, so if the amplifier gets hot, um, it will protect itself, and then if it overdrives the amp itself, it has RMS uh, limiting in it too. So crossover frequencies, we'll get into that on the DSP on the thing um, and take a look and see what's available as far as selectable crossover frequencies on this um, as well. So um, this is our first um, look at this sub. Um, I have not heard it yet, so we're going to be doing some playing with it as well. Um, we've got these going into a install that we are doing locally here, so we thought we'd just bust this thing out and do a quick video on it uh, to kind of let you see what this new uh, Mark II series sub is all about. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get the sub up here on the table and start the process of getting this thing taken apart. Okay, so we got it up on the table. You can see it's not quite a beast, but it's a pretty good size for a 15-inch sub. Um, one of the things I want to mention is warranty certificate. Um, fill this out online, do what you need to do. Um, they are two years warranty, but if you register it, you get an additional year of warranty from RCF. So don't be a hosehead and register your product so you get three years warranty on the thing. So there. Anyway, um, you can see this is a pretty nice looking speaker. Um, it kind of looks like the, uh, the bottom of a Evox 12, um, so to speak. So, but they've done a nice job with it. It is all wood construction. Um, they've got some little um, milled out spots in the top that the feet from another cabinet can sit up there. There is a pole mount in the top. I don't know if I can kind of flip that up and let you see there um, without dropping it on the floor. And then it got some of their nice um, handles with the rubberized grips on the sides um, there and then um, of course on the other side as well. And they've got them positioned a little bit off center so that it's more um, in line with the center of gravity of the speaker so when you lift it up it's not going to flip one way or the other. So um, that was thoughtful. So anyway, here's the back of the speaker and you can see that they've got an update on this with a little um, DSP display and what I'm going to do is come around and get into we'll zoom in a little bit here there we go get into this DSP display we'll go ahead and fire it up but um, what we've got is uh, the stereo ins and outs um, we've got a button that says crossover or link and um, they are neutral connectors they're not junk they're not garbage and then it's their um, standard digital amplifier they do have listed down here what the presets will do um, they've listed them as l1 through l4 h1 through h4 and then they've got cardioid presets c1 to c4 
um, as well. It is made in Italy, so um, that's a good thing. And then they've got the PowerCon in and link out on it, um, 15 amps max. Pay attention, 15 amps max um, out of these things. So you can end up probably daisy chaining two or three of them together um, is what I would do as far as maximum runs on these things. Um, but uh, nice looking speaker, um, amplifier um, in the back of it is in with uh, Allen head screws and those are going to be probably um, just standard wood screws. They may be machined, but we'll take a look at that when we get it out and uh, get, it, get it fired up. But um, what I want to do is just, you know, kind of let you look at the construction of this thing. Um, the grill on it is held in by uh, four threaded screws that have little, and you can see it in there, little rubber isolators so that the, um, the grill is isolated from the wood um, itself uh, on the speaker. So um, what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and get into it. After we get it all back together, we'll get in and uh, play with the, um, the DSP and everything on it and show you what that is all about. But um, we'll go ahead and get this puppy opened up and take a look at the internal construction, what they've got on the inside. And then we'll also take a look at what they're using for a driver on this sub 9005 AS Mark II from RCF. Okay, so now we've got the grill undone here and we're just gonna go ahead and pull this guy. Um, again, as with the RCF, um, very nice construction. The um, foam on the inside is glued on and um, really is a nice professional look. Um, again, gauge of the material, I am guessing probably 18 gauge um, as far as what the um, the thickness of the metal is on the uh, the grill on this guy. So we're going to set the grill off to the side and what we've got is a 15 inch woofer. So um, just bandpass you know type configuration um, on it and um, what we're going to do is get that speaker pulled out um, but you can see what they've done with it. I mean it's got you know wood face plate on it. Um, these are most likely threaded inserts um, on the face of the speaker. In fact, let's take a peek. They are, so they're machine screws right on the face of the speaker, so the speaker has to be changed out. You really are not going to have to worry too greatly about wood stripping out and having to realign the speaker into new holes and things like that. And that's one thing with RCF that they've been um, very good on. At, um, even though it is a little bit more money to do something like that, um, they just kind of think ahead on it as well. So we're going to go ahead and get all these lower screws out here. And we'll pull that top one last as it is hanging in midair there. And there we go. Luckily, through all of these demos, I have never stuck the drill through the front of a cone yet. Knock on wood. So, so well, there we got it. Um, let's go ahead and pull the leads off. There goes the plus, and there goes the minus. So we have got a ceramic magnet that is just heavier than all get out. So here we go, big mother. I mean, this thing has got a way. I don't have a scale here, but I'm gonna guess this thing's gotta be close to 15, 18 pounds. Um, it does have a stamped basket on it, as you can see there. Um, it is vented down the center of it um, with a little dust filter on it. To, but that is for cooling. But this thing is just massive um, as far as the magnet structure. And that's probably why they can get the sound out of it that they do. So we'll get that down. Um, leads come out here, plus and minus for the speaker. Um, you can see on the inside now, um, 
it's all solid. They've got this piece going across here that is glued and screwed in. Um, they've got some additional bracing here on the side for the handles to go through, and then the handles are on thread certs um, as well. And then the pole cup is through the top. They've got a little bit of dampening material in the back um, where the amplifier pops through. And you can see that we may have a little bit of a problem getting the amp out, but we'll loosen these wires up because they do have kind of a strain relief um, that is double stapled in there. But as far as the, um, the overall construction of it, um, as with the RCF product, um, it is very good. You can see that, uh, and you probably can't see it on the camera, but I can see it here. It is the multi-layered plywood. You can see the rings of the plywood um, as they have cut out for the opening here. Um, and you can see the different layers um, that are in the cabinet. And then everything around the edge here, like I said, is on thread certs so that should you ever need to change a driver out, it is done very easily. But that is the extent of the cabinet of the 905 uh, AS Mark II. Um, we're going to go ahead now and flip this puppy around and change out the bit in the um, drill and pull all these screws on the amplifier. This is one of their standard amps though, so there's probably not going to be a whole lot that we're going to be able to see on it. Um, but I just want to pull it. More of the Brainiac stuff of what we're really excited about is here. Um, in the new DSP modules on these guys. So um, we're going to go ahead and kind of be unorthodox here and step in front of the camera and get this thing pulled. Yeah, and all of the, the screws here are threaded machine screws um, that put the amplifier in place. But that just allows it to make a good seal all the way around the cabinet and then you don't ever have to worry about stripping screws out should something ever go south um, on an amplifier or anything um, within this, uh, this module. Sorry, it's a little loud, but we'll get this done real quick. As we've said in some of our other videos, these RCF amplifiers are some of the most reliable power amps that, um, for the form factor and everything that we have come across. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that off and man they just keep making these things smaller and smaller it is stinking amazing you're gonna freak when you see this so this is an 1100 watt rms amplifier but look at this puppy we have got here this is the power input section ferrite beads power input section here and then goes up into the transformer, up going into the amplifier. Um, and then we get into the, um, the semiconductors, which they're underneath. Let's see here. You can't really see it, and I don't think the camera is going to focus here. But they're underneath here on the um, aluminum heat sink is where they're affixed to um, for the power amp. So, but this is, the and no fan, no freaking fan. That's what I love about these things. And so you can see what they've done um, with this Mark II amp. They've got the DSP cable coming in here at the top. And then we've got all of the surface mount electronics here on the amplifier that take all that DSP uh, signal and route it into the amplifier um, coming from this module up here. I'm not going to take this apart because it's got stuff in there that will, it's going to look like this circuit board there. So we really, I mean, let's see if we can kind of, so you can see what they've done with all the surface mount technology on these puppies. It is just stinking amazing um, of what they're able to do now, which years ago, um, all of this would have just made a huge freaking amplifier. Um, of what they've been able to do with um, diodes and resistors and the circuitry and everything that goes on to these. Um, you'd be looking at an amplifier that would be, you know, a, a two rack U um, 
big amplifier like some of the Crown and QSC amps and things like that of years gone by. Now they can put all that in something this size. And the weight of this thing, um, this whole thing is probably four pounds, heat sink and all. So that is pretty much it. Um, pretty slick, pretty stinking slick. So um, just to go over kind of the settings on the DSP before we get into it, I'm just kind of show you here what we're kind of looking at. But um, preset L1 is extended low at, uh, has a high pass at 30, low pass at 60, so it's between 30 and 60. Then you go up to L2. Let's see, get this in focus here. L2, and that is 30 to 80, and then we go 30 to 100, and then we go 30 to 125. And then in the H, the hard, we go 40 to 60, 40 to 80, 40 to 100, 40 to 125. My guess, I would run these things in the 40 to 100 or 40 to 80 mode. Um, and then they've got the cardioid presets in there too. Um, but we'll take a look in the manual and see what um, what some of the actual settings are for on this and um, give you the lowdown on that. I'm going to go ahead and put this little jumper back on so we don't forget to do that. And then that guy just fits right into that cavity that they have milled in there. And then we're not going to strip the screws, so we're going to run these in just very gingerly. Picked up some of the wrong screws. Get all these big guys back in here. So with this, I mean, because this is just a single amplifier, single speaker, very basic design, um, there's really not a whole lot we can go into as far as depth um, of what you know, this speaker is all about. All the magic and everything is done up in this DSP and in the amplifier section. And um, we'll get um, smart fired up and take a look at the, uh, the actual responses that uh, we are seeing with this um, versus what they have published and um, take a listen. We probably won't have a listening video up on this um, until we do a install at a, uh, going into a gymnasium fellowship hall at a local church. Um, we've got two of these going in. And then we've got a couple of competing line speakers that are going in with it as well that we're going to hang on the wall. Sorry about all the noise. And we are in. And we rotate this puppy around. And there's our cavity for the speaker. So quite amazing what they've been able to do um, with subwoofers now uh, and the tunings and the way that speaker technology has come along and what they can do with magnets and getting into the, the neo magnets and reducing the size and keeping the effect of gauss of the magnets um, very strong uh, and the magnetic field to be able to do what that voice coil needs to do under power. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get this speaker back in, uh, we'll get the grill back on, and then we'll get the, uh, the Mac Pro out and get Smart fired up and uh, get in and take a listen as far as some response curves and things like that of what this RCF 905AS Mark II can do. Okay, so now we're going to go through and talk about presets real quick. And then what we'll do is once we get this fired up, um, on the smart here. We'll go ahead and um, listen to what each of these will do and then look at the, um, the overall responses um, on it as well. So um, what they've done with the L1, L4, those are extended um, low presets. 
um, more extended in linear frequency response. So like we said, L1 30 to 60, L2 30 to 80, L3 30 to 100, L4 30 to 125. Um, again, the 30 is probably going to end up being 6 to 10 dB down of what it's going to do at its um, kind of its prime frequency, which we'll kind of see here. The hard presets, less extended frequency response, more pressure in the 50 to 60 hertz area. H1, 40 to 60, H2, 40 to 80, H3, 40 to 100, H4, 40 to 125. And then they've got the cardioid presets in combination with the L that do the same thing, but just in a cardioid um, configuration. So they've got that in the manual and also here on the back of the speaker. Um, what I'm going to do is we'll adjust this camera here. And I know the lights kind of just suck to do this, but maybe we can turn this so that the glare is not so bad. And um, you can kind of see what's going on with this display here as my head is in the way. Let's zoom back out a little bit. Let's just leave it there. So we're going to go ahead and grab the power cord here. And as you notice, there is not any on and off button on the thing. So we do have power that shows up that it popped up there. And then you press the button and you've got at your gain. And now this lights up and that is, I don't think you can see it flash in there. That tells you you're in delay mode. And then this is preset L1, L2, L3, and then cardioid all the way through. So we're just going to leave it in L1 for right now. And we're back to signal. And we're just going to leave it set kind of wide open. We're not going to attenuate it um, at all. Um, again, this is the link crossover button um, that is here. So out, it is in link mode. In, it comes as crossover out. So. We get a lot of questions um, about subwoofers and things like that. And that is one of the reasons why we like RCF and DB Technologies and FBT um, is that on their subs, I'd say for m most of them, 90% of them or so, they have a built-in crossover so that you're not running your top boxes full range and having to give all of that base energy up to your top boxes when you're utilizing a subwoofer. You can use an outboard processor, but this makes it so stupidly easy um, that you can run your main left-right signals into these or just one. Your left into one, if you've got another one on the other side, your right into the other one and out up into the top box that you go when it's in crossover mode. That way, the sub's going to do what the sub needs to do and produce that low frequency energy. And it's going to take everything from where you set that preset at 80 or 100 or 120 and shove it up to your top box so that you're not trying to push through another 15 inch driver or a 12 inch driver or a 10 or an 8 or whatever. When you're using these things, you're not trying to push all that energy and send it into limiting prematurely. I had a conversation the other day with a guy on the phone about that. And it's like, get a, he was using QSC KW181s. I don't like them. There you have it. And this is one of the reasons why. And they got fans in them otherwise. Um, but there was no crossover out of the thing. So he was running his top boxes full range. And he's like, man, the limit light's coming on. You know, when I've got these things going, I said, then you're going to have to turn the top boxes down on the gain or get you some subwoofers that have the crossover on them because you're running those things full range. It's seeing all that sub low frequency energy into your top two-way speakers that it's really not supposed to be seeing. So anyway, another soapbox thing, but that's really important to do that because that's really what's going to define your sound from somebody else's um, that can just do sound where you're going to do it and you're going to be doing it very well. Um, it's just taking the tools of the trade and being able to know what to do and when to do it. 
Um, because then you can let the subwoofers do all that low energy and really let your top boxes do what they need to do, which you can get more gain out of them at that point um, when these subs are doing all the low frequency um, for your events, gigs, whether it's live or whether you're DJing. So anyway, um, what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to pull power on this thing just temporarily here. And we're going to go ahead and get some signal into this puppy. We'll go back on. And I am, for now, going to really turn this puppy down as we apply signal to it. What the speaker is doing. And you can see kind of where, as we turn up the noise, you can kind of see where its hot spot is or its sweet spot so to speak of where it's really effectively producing the greatest volume level which is here in this orange or red which is right at about 80 Hertz kind of common um, for these puppies so, but it is effectively producing, um, as you can see here on the graph, I think you can see that, it is effectively producing down to about 40, maybe not quite as loud, um, but if we look at those things, we're up at about 36, down to 48, so we're 6, 8 dB down, um, which that's kind of what we said, 6 to 10 dB down in those, those lower areas. Um, but it is effectively doing that. Um, you can see my voice kind of picking, but yeah, as far as the upper range where it really starts to roll off here um, is right up at about yeah, 150 um, is where it's effectively producing to. Um, broad spectrum um, with everything. So really quite... Um, Quite amazing what this puppy can do. We're not going to check SPL levels or anything like that um, with it because we're pretty quiet right now in the uh, in the space and really are not going to get in to do that. But you know you can see where it is really effectively got some pretty good energy um, right there at about 80 hertz. So what I want to do is we're going to then, that's the L1 preset, which if we get the bookie out here, the L1 preset is the extended low, 30 to 60, is where it emphasizes that. And um, we're gonna go ahead now and switch her to L2. just went into L2 which is 30 to 80 and you can hear we, we're starting to get a little bit of loop back in the measurement microphone but still looking about the same as far as the the trace is concerned we're going to go now to L3 L3 is 30 to 100 so you can really I can hear and I don't know if you can see but we really picked up quite a bit of above 80 um, in it that I can hear more of the um, kind of the high mid levels in this thing and now we're going to go to L4 and that even picked up more that we can hear it all the way up to 125 now but as you can see we've got that peak where is that at there? Right at about 140, 130. We're going to drop that back down now to L1. Big difference though. You could, you could just see that come off. We're going to go back to L2. 
L3 and then go to L4. Yeah, quite a, quite a bit difference in the response of it. So now we're going to go ahead and get into the hard presets. So this is H1. That is 40 to 60. So it's less. So it, we rolled off quite a bit um, of the low end, not as rumbly, and going 40 to 60 is where the main energy is focused um, for the, uh, the H1 preset. Now we're going to go to H2. So we're starting to hear some more low frequency energy that it's picked up from the 60 to 80, another 20 cycles. And you can see that on the, uh, on the smart display there. We're now going to go to H3. There's H3. So we picked up some more energy up to 100. And now we're going to go H4. So now we've picked up 40 to 125. And you can really hear that low mid from the 100 to 125 really kind of come into play almost to the point where we're just we're getting too much back into the uh, measurement mic on this. But I think out of all the ones that we've done, I think I like L2 the best, the 30 to 80. Let me listen to H2. Yeah, it's a, it's a cross up, at least to mine, um, between L2 and H2. It's going to be interesting to see when we get music content going through these things of how the, um, the speakers react. We'll go back to L1. And now we're back to the original default setting of the speaker. So, um, but once we do the install, we'll be able to, you know, kind of take the smart out and do some measurements on this thing. We're going to go ahead and shut that off. Um, but you can kind of see now what the response of that speaker is. Um, for a 15 inch, um, let me get back around the table here so that we can get into the camera. But for a, um, a 15 inch, I'm really quite impressed. Uh, we've got some 15 inch subs from a competitor um, and they're not quite at the level of this one is with a DSP and everything, but they're, they're pretty decent. Um, but they don't sound like this. Um, so these things are going to be quite, I'm really quite anxious to hear what these things are going to sound like in a, um, a live environment, setting music playback or um, live band. So um, gosh, really nice job. I love the DSP settings on them. Kind of reminds me of what they've done with some of the TT stuff. We've got TT, um, TTS 26 and 36 subs and they've done some of the same things with settings on these things that they've done with their higher end TT line, which is awesome. So um, it, it just gives us more control over what we're able to do without getting in and having to have fancy crossovers and um, processors and things like that. Um, and give you a lot of latitude in the control without having to get into network control, RDNet and things like that, uh, where it just gets you a really good speaker, but it gets you kind of out of the basic stuff and into a really kind of a pro level box that you've got a lot of adjustability on um, that gives, you know, kind of can tailor your sound um, on what you're looking for. But again, with the built-in crossover, use it you will be amazed at what, um, what that can do if you don't have an outboard processor on your speakers. Now, I believe all of the sub-series come with that. So all of them from the 15 inch, I don't think, I'm not sure if they make a 12, but they make them all the way up to um, the big double 18s and they are just amazing. So that is it for the RCF um, 905 AS Mark II. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop us a line. Um, you can email us at info at trinityprosound.com or you can get us just comment on the video and um, we'll respond to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, pricing wise, give us a buzz. Um, we will give you pricing on these things. We will not be undersold. 
So um, if you want a pair of these things, um, give us a buzz and we can have them shipped to you directly ASAP. Um, look us up on the web, www.trinityprosound.com. We are also on Facebook here on YouTube as you have found us and or subscribed. And um, we'll be posting videos in the future. Um, got some big plans coming for 2018. Again, Happy New Year. This video is being done just a few days after the new year. So um, looking forward to some great things. Um, we are dealers not only for RCF, but about 50 other lines. Um, we use Allen and Heath products. We are uh, DLive users and dealers. So if you're looking for a DLive console, um, we've got really good experience with those um, in our live production work. So um, there you have it. RCF 905AS Mark II. It is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com. Thanks for watching.